Hey, Math 3 2 today we're going to look at division of rational expressions. So a quick review of dividing rational numbers or dividing fractions. Recall that the procedure for division by a rational number is to multiply by the reciprocal of that rational number. So if I've got 7 tenths divided by 3 fourteenths, what I'm going to do is change division multiplication and take the reciprocal of that divisor. So 7 tenths divided by 3 fourteenths is like saying 7 tenths multiplied by 14 thirds. Now we're going to try and see if we can reduce any numerator to any denominator. I notice that 10 and 14 are both divisible by 2. And that's about it for simplifying numerator and denominator. So I can go ahead and uh, multiply my numerators. 7 times 7 is 49, and my denominators, 5 times 3 is 15. All right, so 49 15 that's in lowest terms because neither the numerator or the denominator have a common factor, but this is an improper fraction, which is fine. We can leave it as an improper fraction in lowest terms. You could write it as a mixed fraction, but we're good like that. Part B, 60 over 50 divided by 9 over 10. Well, the rule is keep your um, first fraction, change division multiplication, and take the reciprocal of your divisor. So 60 over 50 divided by 9 tenths is the same as 60 over 50 multiplied by 10 over 9. And now we can reduce any numerator with any denominator. So 50 and 10 are both divisible by 10. And 60 and 9 are both divisible by 3. And I also notice now that the 20 and the 5 are both divisible by 5. So I keep going with my simplification until I can't find any other factors in my numerator and denominator that are common. So now I've got 4 times 1 in my numerator over 1 times 3 in my denominator. So 4 thirds is the simplest form of this fraction. Again, that's an improper fraction, but it's the lowest terms. That's really what we're most worried about. Now, before we move on to actually trying some rational expressions, there are some rules for the non-permissible values when we talk about division of rational expressions. So let's consider the division of A over B and divided by C over D. A, B, C, and D are all variables. For the rational expression A over B, the non-permissible value is, well, my denominator is B, so B can equal 0. Pretty straightforward. For the rational expression C over D, the non-permissible value is, well, my denominator is D, so D cannot equal 0. Now, recall that the first step in changing division into multiplication uh, simplifying this is we're going to change this division statement into a multiplication statement and we're going to take the reciprocal of our divisor that makes C over D into D over C. This introduces yet another non-permissible value. Look at this last statement. We now have a denominator of C. Once I have a denominator of C, that means C cannot equal 0 either. So for a division of the type A over B divided by C over D, we must consider the non-principal values for B, C, and D. So B and D are already denominators. We always have to look at those. And then when I change division into multiplication, the reciprocal of C over D becomes D over C, making another denominator of C. So really, any variable which appears in the denominator at any stage must be considered for a non-permissible value. That means three of these four positions end up being denominators. Well, B and D are already a denominator, and C will become a denominator when I change division to multiplication. So we've got to make sure we look into all those spots when we talk about non-permissible values. So, example two. State the non-permissible values for the following. Well, based on the work we just did, I have to look at this statement, 2x minus 5. So x cannot equal add 5 divided by 2. 
That's one non-principal value. Look at this denominator. X cannot equal zero. And we must also look at this numerator because when I change division and multiplication, it's going to become the denominator. So the non-principal value for x plus 1 can equal 0, x can equal negative 1. All right, so those three places we have to look. If I go over to part B, what this is really saying is a minus 6 over 3a times a minus 2 divided by a plus 3 all over 1. So where are my non transfer values going to come from? Well, they're going to come from this denominator. So a cannot equal 0. They're going to come from this variable factor in my denominator. a can't equal 2. Well, this denominator does not have a variable in it, so I don't have to worry about it. But this numerator will eventually become a denominator when I change division and multiplication. So the non-permissible value of a plus 3, a plus 3 can equal 0, so that means a can also not equal negative 3. So there are non-permissible values for those situations. All right. Let's look at example 3, division of a single variable rational expression. So the method for division of rational expressions is similar to the method described for rational numbers. The first step is usually to invert the divisor and multiply, then follow the procedure for multiplication of rational expressions. However, the non-permissible values occur when a variable is present in the denominator at any stage in the simplification like we just talked about. So simplify and state the restrictions. Step one, we should always factor. Well, these rational expressions are already completely factored. All right. So my first step is going to be stating non-permissible values. So that's the first thing I'm going to do. So here, x cannot equal. Once I'm done factoring, I'm going to state non-permissible values. In that statement, x cannot equal positive 2. And in this denominator, that variable factor, x can equal negative 3. And in this variable factor, x can equal 0. And in this variable factor, x can equal negative 3. Well, I've got that one already. And I must also look to this numerator, x plus 1 can equal 0, so it's also negative 1. All right, so my non-permissible values occur in all those spots. So x cannot equal 2 or negative 3 or 0 or negative 1. Now I'm going to change a division statement to a multiplication statement. So let's simplify this rational expression by dividing. So my first rational expression is not going to change. I change division multiplication. I take the reciprocal of that divisor. And now I can go ahead and reduce any numerator with any denominator. So x plus 1 is divided by x plus 1. They reduce down to 1. x plus 3 is divided by x plus 3. They reduce down to 1. I can't find any other common factors in my numerator or denominator, so I go ahead and multiply. 1 times x times 1 is x in my numerator. x minus 2 times 1 times 2 times 1 is 2 times x minus 2 in my denominator. All right, so there is my simplified rational expression. There are my non-permissible values as restrictions. Part B. Step one is always to factor. So this numerator, 4x plus 12, a common factor of 4, I'm left with x plus 3. Over this denominator has a common factor of 3. 3x three, divided by 3 is x, and 12 divided by x is 4. This line right here means we're going to divide. So we're going to divide by the second rational expression. The common factor of 3x squared plus 9x is a 3x. And 3x squared divided by 3x is x, plus 9x divided by 3x is a plus 3. All over, x plus 4 all squared can be written as x plus 4 times x plus 4. 
great. I have now finished factoring. From this factored form, I'm going to state my non-permissible values. So x cannot equal a bunch of things. And I look at my first denominator, x plus 4. So x can equal negative 4. Look at my second denominator, x plus 4. Well, it can equal negative 4. I already have it. x plus 4. Well, it can equal negative 4. I already have it. And I must look at this numerator. So here, 3x can equal 0. So x can equal 0. And here, x plus 3 can equal 0. So x can equal negative 3. So I look at all those spots for my non-permissible values. Now I'm going to change division multiplication. So my first rational expression is not going to change. I'm going to change division and multiplication, and I take the reciprocal of my divisor. And I can now reduce any numerator with any denominator if they're a common factor. So x plus 3 divided by x plus 3, well, that's 1. 3x plus, sorry, x plus 4 divided by x plus 4, that's 1. There's nothing else common in my numerator with my denominator, so I can go ahead and simplify. 4 times 1 times 1 times x plus 4, so my numerator is 4 times x plus 4 all over my denominator. 3 times 1 times 3x times 1 is 9x. So there's my simplest rational expression. There are my non-permissible values as restrictions. All right. Let's look at example four. Write two rational expressions whose product is x plus 1 over 5, where x can't equal 0 or 3. Now, we've got all sorts of possibilities here. Look at your non permissive values, x can equal 0 or 3. Well, right now I've got a non permissive value of x can equal 0. I must come up with another non permissive value of x can equal 3. So in order for that to happen, my denominator must be x minus 3. So anything over x minus 3, and we're going to be fine. Um, Really, it doesn't really matter what that is. Uh, but if I want the product to equal this statement, maybe I want to have a numerator of x plus 1 over that. So let's write that as x plus 1 over x minus 3. I'm going to multiply this whole thing by, I need a denominator of 5x, right? So that's one non permissive value of 0. Here's my other non permissive value of 3. If I want my only numerator to be x plus 1, then I better get rid of my denominator of x minus 3. So that should be my other numerator. So if I were to multiply these two rational expressions, I would have non permissive value here of 3 and here of 0. And then these two would reduce down to 1, I'd be left with x plus 1 over 5x. So that might be the way to do it. Part B, we want a quotient that is x plus 1 over 5x with non-permissible values of 0, 2, and 3. All right. So I'm now going to divide. So I need one denominator of 5x. And I need to finish with the numerator of x plus 1. So like we did last time, let's put the numerator of x plus 1 here. And I need, oh, I need that denominator of x minus 3 again. Oop, hold on. Actually, it might be easier to write this as a multiplication statement first. So let's do that. So I want to get rid of the x minus 3s. That's for sure. Right? And I want my 5x to be in the number when I finish. So right now that's the same as the last one. But I also have to have this non permissible value of 2 in there. So maybe let's put this x minus 2 here. And then I have to 
factor that out and get rid of it. So if I started with that as a multiplication statement and then change that into a division statement, the first rational expression is not going to change. We're going to divide by 5x over x minus 3 and x minus 2 there. So I've written a division statement where if I were to multiply the x minus 3's would cancel out, but I still have a non permissive value of 3. The x minus 2's would cancel out. I still have a non permissive value of x can equal 2. I've got a non permissive value of x can equal 0, and I'm left with 5x plus, or x plus 1 over 5x. So that might be how I do a question like that. All right. So, well, you go questions 1 through 10.